Today we are going to look at the next set of trigonometric identities. Here we have the double and half angle identities. Uh, for these we are going to be using them in a lot of different ways. For the double, uh, we have one formula for sine and tangent, as you can see, but we have three for cosine of two theta. What this basically works out to be is that you get a choice. I can use any one of these three formulas at any time. Now that's really not how it works because what really is going to happen is you're going to be given uh, a question that says find the cosine of two theta and you will be given a choice. Usually there is a better or best choice of the three. For example, if I've been given uh, the problem to find cosine of two theta and in the problem they tell me here's the cosine of actual uh, of, of an angle theta then I'm going to use this one. If they give me the sine, I'm going to use this one. If they give me the tangent, well, I'm going to pick either one of these two because it really won't matter. I typically do not use this one uh, in that kind of problem because I have to find two different values. I need the cosine and the sine to work with. And so that would simply make my job a little bit more difficult. So keep in mind, we'll do an example here in just a minute to kind of show you what I mean. For the half angle identities, it's really the same kind of situation. For this one, uh, these two formulas are essentially equivalent. You are welcome to use either one at any time. I tend to use this one. I tend to want just a single denominator um, rather than the combination here, but ultimately it won't matter. The math really does kind of work out to be about the same. For these two, the thing I want you to be careful about is that the angle you're working with is going to be uh, if this is half of an angle, then this is the full angle. So if I tell you sine of 15, they're going to be using 30. If I use a sine of 22.5, then it'll be the cosine of 45, right? You always double the angle that you're given to work with in this one, and we'll do an example of that as well. The only other part of this is this plus or minus piece. This is something that is a choice. Um, it's a, there is a correct answer to this. If the angle that you've been asked to work with is in the first quadrant, well, any trig function in the first quadrant is always positive. Um, it, for sine, the first and second quadrants are positive. The third and fourth quadrants would be negative. For cosine, if the angle I've been asked to work with is in the first or fourth quadrant, it's positive. If it is in the third or second quadrants, then it would be negative. All right? If you remember, we, we always drew this out. Uh, on the unit circle, we always had a little bit of a phrase we always mentioned. Uh, it looked something like this, where we had all students take classes. Uh, this would tell me where every one of them is positive. So sine, everything is positive up here. Sine is positive here, which would make cosine and tangent negative. Here we have tangent to be positive. That would make sine and cosine negative. And then cosine is positive here and that would make sine and tangent negative here. So that kind of tells you how we get those kinds of things to happen. Let's do some examples. For number one, uh, what we're going to look at is uh, I have the sine of 15, and I've been asked to, to use a double or half angle identity. I'm going to choose to use the, the half angle, which is most common. I doubled this 15 to get something that we're familiar with, so I'm going to draw that angle. Notice here we have 30 over 2, which is the same as 15. But that theta is what I'm going to be working with here in the angle. Because I know that, I can draw this triangle, and then I can basically plug values in. So you can see here, I've went ahead and plugged 30 in. The cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2. I plug that in here, and then I'm going to come over here, and I am going to basically simplify that. I would turn the 1 into 2 over 2 and combine that. 2 over 2 minus the square root of 3 over 2 allows me to create this fraction. 2 minus the square root of 3 all over 2 because we had a common denominator. All of that over 2, which we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, 1 over 2 here, and then I'm just going to simplify that back. One thing to note, if you see that 4 right there, I can take the square root of that bottom part, square root of 4 equals just 2. The top part we're going to leave is a radical by itself. That can't be simplified, and so you're just going to leave it alone. Okay, the next type of question is something like this. They're going to be giving you some information, and they're going to be telling you where the angle is. Now, sometimes this may be relevant, and sometimes it may not be. In this example, cosine of th 2 theta has a formula that looks like this. I can take this because the only thing I need is the exact value they gave me. It means that I don't have to do any extra work. 
I take this, I'm gonna plug it into sine, you see that? And then I'm gonna kind of work it out. The sine squared would be 9 25ths. We're gonna multiply by two, which would be 18 over 25. I'm gonna take the one, I'm gonna convert that into a 25 over 25 and subtract, we get seven, seven over 25. That's pretty straightforward. If we look at the next part, now let's suppose, now I know that I can definitely do this question in the same way as I did number five, but let's suppose we make the wrong choice. And the formula that I've chosen is not what, I don't have any information given to me. I really should be using the one with cosine only, but let's see what it looks like to do this problem all the way through. Sometimes they're gonna give you, like in number seven and eight, I don't have the things that I need, so I need to work it out. So here's how I'm gonna do that. They tell me that my angle is between pi and three pi over two. Well, uh, three pi over two is here, and pi is here. That means that this angle is in the third quadrant, which means I have a negative four over five, right? So we can look at that. I know that this three is also actually a negative value because it's in the third quadrant. At this stage, I can tell you the sine, the cosine, the tangent, and all the other three trig functions if I needed to. I don't need those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write out the things I need, right? So these are the things that we got. They gave me the cosine, I needed the sine. So I'm gonna plug that in now. And so we can have negative three-fifths uh, all squared times two. Just, this is exactly uh, the previous question. Um, we're trying to find not this cosine, but if I double this angle, that's gonna put me uh, in, in on, the, on the other side. And so I would do one minus two times nine over 25. I'm not gonna repeat myself. This is exactly the same math as before. What I want to focus on was the fact that this process was used to get the thing that I needed. And when you have a situation like that that creates a math problem where you need something that you don't have, this is how you get it, right? Now realize the real way to do this would have been to choose the other formula with two cosine squared theta. And I would have just plugged that in and worked it out exactly like number six. Your assignment today is really to go through this worksheet and to kind of mimic what I've done here. Uh, if you've got questions, please send them my way and I'll get to them as soon as possible.